Hello, I'm Bernie Norcott Mahaney. I work at the Blueford branch of the Kansas City Public Library, and I also teach at Johnson County Community College. Through the month of April, I am taking some time to read some poems aloud and share them. Um, National Poetry Month is April, and uh, it's a time for sharing poems, uh, poems that you like. Uh, Oftentimes, you do this just by pointing out poems, by sharing poems, by sending links to poems, by doing all that other stuff. Those are all very good, but poems are meant to be heard, and so I'm reading them aloud so that you can hear them, and also I'm hoping that you will then be inspired to read poems aloud if you're not already doing that. So I do encourage you to get some poetry, get some current poets. There are lots of great poets currently alive and, work, and, and working. Um, you know, even local poets, um, you know, hear, hear poems, but also start reading them aloud yourself to help make them yours uh, in some way. So today, two poems, both of them short. The first poem is by a guy named Walter Savage Landor. I confess I do not know anything really about Walter Landor. Um, this poem is called On Catullus, and it is a poem in honor of the Roman poet Gaius Valerius Catullus, who was a contemporary of Julius Caesar, um, the usual dates for his life, 85 to 55 BCE. We don't know exactly when he died. We don't know if he died at 30 or if he died at 40, so there's, you know, there's some room for here for discussion. But um, he was an important poet. Uh, he di did die young. I mean, he didn't live past 40. Uh, and the likelihood is he died in his 30s at some, some point, probably 30 or his early 30s. Catullus is the first major Latin lyric poet. He's the first Latin poet to take Greek lyric forms and really make them sing in Latin. And that is no mean accomplishment. Um, Catullus is, is, is a very lively poet. He's often irreverent. Uh, he's often very funny. Uh, he's a, a very much a romantic figure. Um, you know, he, he's well worth reading, even in translation. Uh, he's, he's beautiful in Latin. Um, but <clears throat> since I'm assuming most of the people watching will not know the Latin, then I will not be reading him in Latin. So this poem by Landor is just a little hint, sort of brief ejaculation of praise. Uh, about Catullus. Um, there are two phrases in the poem uh, to, to, to uh, alert you to. He refers to the bard of Sermio. A bard, of course, the poet, the bard of Sermio is Catullus. He also refers to Catullus as Thalia's son, the son of Thalia, who's one of the muses. This, of course, is an honorific. I mean, Catullus had human parents like everyone else, but because he is a poet, he is here given the title Thalia's son, uh, and later the word grace is used, here referring to the graces were uh, minor goddesses in Greek, uh, in Roman mythology, uh, and what they did is they gave um, the, the gift of gracefulness uh, or, um, you know, poetic endeavor. So that's when he talks about the grace here. Um, he basically is sort of in, in Implying or saying that Catullus is divinely inspired. So, let's do this poem. On Catullus by Walter Savage Landor. Tell me not what too well I know about the bard of Sermio. Yes, in Thalia's son such stains there are as when a grace sprinkles another's laughing face with nectar and runs on. So that was On Catullus by Walter Savage Landor. The Catullus poem that I'm going to read, because how can I have a thing celebrating Catullus without reading a poem by Catullus? This is a poem, um, Catullus 51. There are 116 poems of Catullus. Uh, his entire poetic output is about 50 pages, so it's, we don't have a lot, but what we have is, is good stuff. Um, and uh, they're all numbered, and this is number 51. The 
title given to it by the translator, William Gladstone, who was a British politician and uh, prime minister a couple times in the 19th century, um, is him rival to the gods I place, which is the opening line of the poem in Latin and in the Greek original that Catullus is initially translating, although at the end he subverts that. So what we have here is a is Catullus translating with some variation a poem by Sappho, a Greek poet. And then in the end he gives it a nice Roman twist where he criticizes himself for all this um, being lazy and being all gaga-eyed rather than doing like the right thing, right? The Romans are all about doing the right thing, about doing duty. And so we get the, the Sappho poem, but we get a nice little twist here that has a Roman flavor. Now, um, there's one phrase in here worth noting, and that is the name of the woman. Um, this is addressed to a woman, the, the first three stanzas, a woman named Lesbia. Now, Lesbia is not her real name. The most likely person is Clodia. Um, why Lesbia instead of Clodia? Clodia was a married woman, and it was a convention in Latin and even Greek poems to not name the woman in question, who often might be a married woman, uh, but rather to give her a name that fits her in some way. So in this particular case, Catullus calls her Lesbia because Lesbia, like Clodia, is three syllables long, starting with an accented long syllable. Right? So da da da. Right? So they both fit that. So that's that's why he would choose that name. Why Lesbia and not some other name? Well, Lesbia implies woman of Lesbos. And Sappho, the poet whose work he's actually translating here and then subverting, is from Lesbos. So Lesbia can refer to Clodia, but also can refer to Sappho as a woman from Lesbos. So it's a nice little, little play. Um, he has other poems to Lesbia, but this is one of them. So him rival to the gods I place, Catullus 51, translated by... William Gladstone. Him rival to the gods I place, him loftier yet, if loftier be, who, Lesbia, sits before thy face, who listens and who looks on thee, thee smiling soft. Yet this delight doth all my sense consign to death, for when thou donnest on my sight, ah, wretched, flits my laboring breath, my tongue is palsied. Subtly hid fire creeps me through from limb to limb. My loud ears tingle all unbid. Twin clouds of night mine eyes bedim. Ease is my plague. Ease makes thee void, Catullus, with these vacant hours and wanton. Ease that hath destroyed great kings and states with all their powers. So that was him, rival to the gods I place, Catullus 51, translated by William Gladstone.